We are living in unprecedented times. No matter what industry you come from, we must all review, rethink, and reinvent ourselves. Are you an entrepreneur that is trying to adapt your business to the new norm? Well, you are listening to the 2020 Entrepreneur, a podcast that will motivate you and have you think outside of the box. My name is Hugo Almeida, and with over 30 years of being an entrepreneur, I am here to share and inspire you with my experiences and help invent a new you. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of T20E World, and today we're going to be talking about starting a new business. Holy cow. I hope you thought this through. But what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to share six key bullets. With these bullets, you jot them down, you follow these steps, and then you can make up your mind as to should you proceed or not. I'm all about starting a new business if and when you think it through and you make sure you can answer these six bullet points and you have all the information under these six bullets, you're ready to go. So bullet number one, obviously, you got to do your homework. You got to know your industry, right? You got to understand the market you're going to be playing ball in, right? If I'm going to open up, I don't know, just a a Rita's ice cream parlor down the street from another Dairy Queen, are you going to really make the profit you're looking to make? Chances are no, because you're going to be splitting the crowd. So understand your industry, understand your market, and guess what? Know your competition, who's around, who plays in your space. You got to know that area. Those are key points to understand. What about profitability? Is the area and the space you're going to be working in and selling into, is it profitable? That's it. really, really important. So you got to know, is there a real market? Is there room for another player in your area? Understanding TAMs and SAMs, right? What's a TAM? Your total available market. And what's SAM? SAM is your serviceable available market, right? So from the total market, how much do you really think you can capture that will give you an idea of your profit, okay? Again, understanding the industry, the competition, profitability, your total available market. Is there room for you to play ball in that same space? Bullet number two, get a pen out, write this down. You got to have essential tools. Anybody starting any business in any industry, you got to have the simplicity of basic tools. Now, listen, no one was expecting COVID-19 to hit us the way it did. It slammed us. It turned the world upside down. What wound up happening to many companies that were not prepared? They wound up working virtual. So essential tools means make sure you have the proper software. Make sure you have some sort of a cloud-based server, telephony solution, what may be, but you need to have all the right tools. This will allow you extreme flexibility, which is key in operating business in this new world we work in. Okay, bullet number three, a business plan. Oh, brother, listen, business plans. I can't begin to tell you now how long your business plan should be long term, short term. But what I am going to tell you is you got to be ready to be able to pivot that business because today's world truly is made for flexibility out there for those companies that are lean and mean and be able to shift, you know, into different markets, shift their product, remarket themselves. That is what gets them to where they need to go. Okay, so it's important that you have some sort of a business plan written down. It's your guidelines. Now, should you have a long-term business plan? Yeah, you should have some sort of a direction, a target, and a goal that you want to head to. Realistically, get a really good short-term plan together. I want you to have a long-term business plan, a good vision and goal, but work on that short-term plan and keeping it real. Listen, don't go nuts and start going for the stars when you really are just starting out and you could only get so far. So you got to keep your business plan realistic because if not, at the end of your first fiscal year, you might be nodding your head, scratching your hair or pulling your hair. And this leads me to the next bullet, number four, which is separate your emotions from the business. Why do I even bother bringing this up? I'll tell you exactly why every entrepreneur They love everything they do, and they love it with a passion. The thing is, to be a smart entrepreneur, run a good, lean, and mean business is you got to make decisions sometimes. And when your emotion is wrapped around that business, 
I'll tell you what, sometimes it just takes us into different directions. Those directions are not always going to be the correct decisions. And guess what happens? We lose time. And guess what time equals? It equals money. Okay? So at the end of the day, we're in to do business to make money. And we utilize our time efficiently for all the objects that we want to be able to pursue in those directions. So it's essential, right, that we understand that our heart is in because we're passionate about doing business, but we have to separate the emotions from the business. Listen, one thing I like to also bring up falls under the same bullet is you have to understand when to pull out, when to change, when to modify and pivot the business. Everybody here has been learning with COVID-19. I'm telling you, if you weren't ready to pivot, you might be out of business today. It's, it's, it's horrible. But that's a perfect example that I just want to bring up and share because you had to change. It was a time where you had to relook at everything. And it's a, it's a, it was a time that if you didn't modify or pivot or switch and, and be flexible, you, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard to proceed and make money, right? You want to maintain a business that's profitable. Another point that falls under that same bullet is... Listen, don't sink with the ship. And again, it goes right back to the very first comment. Leave the emotions out when you're making decisions for the business because you want to be able to make good, logical decisions that make total sense. So moving on to the next bullet, number five. Listen to your gut. There's been times in the business world where I have come up with a bunch of different ideas. I love some of them. Some of them I wasn't so sure about. Same thing with partnering with other companies or people. You know, at the end of the day, you got to go with your gut, especially as an entrepreneur, you know, because you're exposed to so many different opportunities, solutions, people, attitudes, characters, emotions, et cetera. You know, deep down inside, you get that gut feeling, whether it's a good or bad decision. I've always relied on that because it's kind of helped me through get some of the tough decisions out there. And fortunately, knock on wood, up until now, I've relied and I've made some really good, smart decisions based on just a solid gut feeling. Obviously, I've covered my five bullets prior to that. But, you know, I always say rely on that. You know, if you don't have, you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Okay. And last but not least, you should have reliable mentors. Why do I say that? Listen. We might know our field, but we're not always the experts in everything. You need to communicate your concerns with good mentors in your business world. They don't have to be from your industry, but it's good. It's good to know entrepreneurs. It's good to know people in education, people that can guide you, people that trust and bounce off ideas. And you know what? That gut feeling in bullet number five, I bounce those off of my mentors. Reach out to them. So listen, we've covered those six bullets, essential bullets that you need to cover before starting a business. Do your homework. Make sure you have those essential tools. Get a business plan written down. Separate the emotions from the business. Listen to that gut, that gut feeling that you get. And you know what? Finally, have reliable mentors. So again, guys, thank you so much for following our podcast. And I'm excited to bring you more stuff and some guests coming up in the near future. So any questions, shoot us an email at info at T20EWorld.com. Until next time, you're listening to T20E World.